six years ago this month on March 11, 2011, a 9.1 magnitude earthquake struck Japan. It triggered a tsunami and a devastating nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station. Japanese exchange student Mei Fukutada uh, joins us with a look at what happened in the region over the past six years and what the government is doing about the cost of energy. In Japan, I live about 600 miles away from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. I'm from Kochi on Shikoku Island, where there is also a nuclear power plant. Before the Great East Japan earthquake, everyone believed nuclear power was clean, inexpensive, and safe. But once the earthquake happened, people in Japan realized nuclear power can also be dangerous. More than 20,000 people died in the Great East Japan earthquake, which also included the tsunami. Six years later, people from 12 cities and towns near the nuclear power plant are not allowed to return home. Radiation levels are still extremely high. Much of the area looks exact as it did right after the disaster because it's too dangerous for crews to come in and clean up. In 2013, experts from the International Atomic Energy Agency visited the site to determine whether Japan's plans to decommission the plant were feasible. And now, people in Japan are worried about the risk of having a nuclear power plant. Demonstration matches took place all over Japan, including this one in Tokyo. And six years after Fukushima, nuclear power is still a controversial subject. Coach University professor Shige Mainishi recently visited Fresno State and says the Fukushima accident changed people's minds about nuclear power. Fresno State business student Caleb Bermudez studied abroad in Japan. He says he can understand why some people still support nuclear power. The irony uh, in it, or you know, the thing that kind of made a big impact in your country, is kind of also making another impact in another way. You know, using that nuclear power plant to, you know, can do all this energy. And like I said, Japan is this awesome country with amazing cities that, you know, have like the biggest lights you can ever see. When he was in Japan, Bermudez visited the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. The irony being that Japan is the only country attacked by atomic bombs, but they keep using nuclear power. Professor Mainichi says, it's a matter of finding an alternative. Protesters can't change the situation if they just disagree with nuclear power without offering a solution. We need to find an alternative and if renewable energy catches on, there may no longer be a need for nuclear power. At Coach University, we are honored to be part of the Global News Relay. Our professor, Michael Sharp, helped coordinate this next report with student Reiko Hosogi. Japan is often portrayed as a pretty conservative place, bound by traditional values and moral codes. So it may come as a surprise to learn that the Japanese people have traditionally had a very liberal attitude towards same-sex relationships and transgenderism. Part of that is due to the influence of Buddhism, one of Japan's two official religions. Unlike in Christian faith, Buddhism is accepting of same-sex relationships. 
In fact, it was Buddhist monks such as those who once lived here who brought the practice to Japan from China in the 9th century. Living in male-only communities, it was perhaps inevitable that sexual relationships would develop. Among the samurai, a class of men more widely known for their martial skills, homosexual love was commonplace. Numerous artworks have survived depicting samurai in sexual acts, and their surviving poems in which homosexuality is celebrated. But attitudes began to change when, in the mid 19th century, Japan opened its doors after two and a half centuries of enforced isolation. Exposed to the influence of Western Christian values, official attitudes towards homosexuality began to harden. Although accepted under the law, it was increasingly viewed with disapproval. From that time on, Japan's LGBT community began to be forced underground, from where it has never fully re-emerged. Although accurate statistics are hard to come by, it is estimated that about 8% or 1 out of every 12 Japanese identify as either lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. A number of leading media personalities, including Haruna Ai and Ikko, are openly gay. There are gay clubs and bars in most of the big cities, a thriving online community, and manga with gay and transgender characters. But while Japan's LGBT community has not faced the kind of homophobia that spawned that gay pride movement in the U.S. like in many countries, its members still have to endure ignorance, prejudice, and discrimination. And this happened not only at home, but also the workplace and at school. As this report from the group Human Rights Watch makes clear, in Japan, being different is not easy. <laughs> 身の in Japan, LGBT students who try to report cases of bullying to their teachers are often faced with a refusal to engage because the teachers either don't understand sexual orientation or gender identity or they see it as a taboo topic that they don't want to take up. Other students are told that the way they should solve the problem is to conform. They were told that their desire to be an openly gay or openly transgender student at the school was a selfish desire and was ruining the harmony of the school for everyone else. Even the national bullying prevention policy promotes school harmony and social conformity instead of discussing the particular vulnerabilities of any group of students.提出するノートや宿題にマジックで落書きされたり盗んで捨てられたり先生の中にも同性愛者に対してはっきり嫌悪感を示す先生がいるって
3人に1人なんですね。なのでそういう基本的なところから知られていないのでだからこそ、えー、まずは知識と。で認識を変えていくこととでその次ですよねどういうふうに授業で扱うかっていうふうなことを学ぶ研修の機会を制度として作っていくというふうなことだと思います。小学校、まあ、決して LGBT の話などを、えー、と教育などありませんでした。先生たちも授業の中でそれを,、えー、そ,れそれを使いながら悪いことを、えー、説明してからから飼っている、えー、経験、それを聞いたことがたくさんあります。自分が信頼するいつも会う先生がもしかしたら自分に関わることかもしれないことをネガティブに悪く言うってことは、その子たちの自己肯定感を低めたり、えー、結果として自尊感情を傷つけるような、えー、そういうふうなことにつながっていくだと思うんですね。For transgender students, the situation can be even worse. In order to attend school according to the gender they identify with, schools often require them to obtain a diagnosis of a mental disorder. Without this, they are forced to wear uniforms they don't identify with, they are denied access to bathrooms, and they are slotted into gender segregated school activities. で自分は絶対に学校に行きたくなくて、えー、学校が終わった時にすごい幸せだった。This year, Japan's National Bullying Prevention Act is up for review. This is a crucial opportunity for the government to address some of the weaknesses in the policy. Most specifically, they should name categories of students who are vulnerable to bullying, including LGBT students. The Japanese government has an opportunity to signal that harmony in schools should be achieved by including everyone and making everyone feel safe. The sad part is that, feeling of consequences of coming out, many LGBT people keep their sexuality a lifelong secret and they spend their lives living in guilt and, in some cases, fear. Tragically, many choose to end their own lives, deny the right to a normal life. Japan has a high rate of suicide, although it is unclear how many of the people who commit suicide do so because of issues with their sexuality. Problems exist on many other levels. Gay marriage has not yet attained legal status and is unlikely to do so under the deeply conservative government of Shinzo Abe. Gay couples are denied many of the same rights as heterosexual couples, including access to welfare. And while LGBT people have certainly an established presence in the media, some critics have pointed out that these are mere caricatures, reinforcing the stereotypes of the gay community. The leather clad character HG, which stands for Hard Gay, who was a popular guest on Japan's so called variety shows. Seems to lend weight sport that criticism. Fortunately, it seems that attitude may be changing. According to re recent research, younger generation of Japanese are voting accepting of LGBT people. Perhaps more importantly, they support the rights of the LGBT community to marry, to adopt children, to have access to financial assistance, and back proposed legislation to outlaw discrimination in the workplace. In the past decade, there has also been a grand swell of gay rights activism in Japan. In Tokyo, 
the country's capital and the home to the largest and the most high-profile gay community. A number of high-profile LGBT events have been held in recent years. Perhaps the most visible happened in April last year, when the first Rainbow Week brought a colorful celebration of LGBT life to the city street. Outside of the capital, too, grassroots activists are working to bring the issue of LGBT rights into the public arena. Here in rural Kochi, a group of local film enthusiasts known as Goto Goto Cinema shows movies dealing with social issues at various locations around the world. On the running list this month was The Case Against Aid. A film dealing with the struggles faced by same sex couples. When it comes to LGBT rights, Japan seems to be rather behind most of the developed world. The gay pride movement in the United States goes back at least 1968. Japan did not begin until 1994. Now it seems it is slowly catching up thanks to changing attitudes among the young and the grassroots activism by groups such as Goto Goto Cinema. It seems that after more than 100 years underground, LGBT people in Japan may be able to live life in the open again. You know, the great thing about doing a show and a project like this is that we really get to see what goes on in Japan. I had no idea stuff went wrong in like that.、Today. Yeah, no, honestly, all day today it's just been like, oh, that is happening in other countries, not just America, which I think it's really fascinating to yeah, find out. Definitely. Well, coming up on the global news relay, how Nanjing, China is looking for ways to protect their water resources from growing pollution. Plus, journalism students in Beijing take a deep, a depth look. At the negative effects that pollutants are having in China. And how campus ambassadors from Binance University in Indonesia use an annual blood donation event to help the Red Cross. With the deep blue waters of the Pacific Ocean to the south and crystal clear water flowing between countless peaks of the valleys to the north. Kochi set the historical stage for a spirit of liberation and autonomy befitting the natural surroundings. Every aspect of Kochi Prefecture's environment and climate contributes to the educational process at Kochi University.